Ciao friends, Beth with Thimblehooks. Thanks for stopping by today. Today I am going to show you something that I made, made up years ago. Because I, I find that Tunisian is pretty addictive. I love it. This is a, just a gorgeous blanket that I love so much. But the thing about it is that it definitely has a right side and a wrong side. See, here's the right side where you can see all the beautiful stitches and there's the wrong side which you can tell is the wrong side even though I love this blanket so much I am not a huge fan of it not being reversible reversible, reversible interlock it can be done you're gonna love it love 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 it addictive and fun and one of my favorites one of my favorites and now I'm on a total interlock kick so I'm going to be making a lot of things so hopefully you enjoy it too let's get started so you can go back and forth and back and forth you don't have to force your color rows you don't have to do do anything you can see that I just kept right on going with my color this is a uh, mandala centaur and I love the colors when you get a nice variegated yarn some of the colors or sequences are really short like this one right here there's not that much so you might not get a whole row out of it and then you're sad see like the blue there's not that much of it in here or the dark purple but there's tons of the cream color right here and there's tons of the brick red and I like the transition so I am going to show you how to do reversible interlock yes it can be done and it looks very nice and I think it's probably my favorite way to do interlock. There's a lot less ends to weave in and you don't have to worry about, I wonder if I'm going to have enough to make it to the end of this row of this blue or this pink and now what am I going to do? Just keep right on going, right on going. And I believe this baby blanket only took me three skeins of mandala. See this is the right side and this is the wrong side. Right side, wrong side, right side, wrong side. But when they're together like this, it's supposed to be that way, and the other side's exactly the same. Right side, wrong side, right side, wrong side. So let's get started with this. I'm going to use another mandala. This one I think is, oh, Janie, I was going to say Pegasus. Darn it. And this wants a five millimeter hook. I find since this is a three weight that a five is a little bit too big, but for interlock, we want to go up a size. So I'm going to use, ta-da, one of my favorites. I love my furls and this is a six millimeter so I'm going up to a six so that I can keep it nice and flat and you notice this isn't curling or anything it's going to be so much fun I hope you're enjoying my video and my channel if so please click that button to subscribe thanks all right so make a slip knot and we want to do multiples of 11 plus one so do all the multiples of 11 that you want plus one I'm going to go to 22 there's 22. This is just going to be an example. Right here, 22 chains plus one. And now we're going to do just normal interlock like I showed you before. So we have one loop on our hook. And we're going to go in and pull up loops into each chain until we have seven loops on our hook. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Just like on all other interlocks, seven on your hook. Please remember that it really helps my channel when you watch the video all the way to the end. You want to yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, again, and then yarn over and pull through your last hook, or your last loop, not a hook, silly. 
So now you can see we have one, two, three, four, five vertical bars that we want to be working in right here. So we're going to work underneath these vertical bars just like this. Pull up a loop, go into the next one, pull up a loop, all five. There's the third one, there's the fourth one, and there's the fifth one but you always want to have seven loops on your hook so we have to do one more thing. After we do all of our vertical bars we have to do one more thing because we need another loop on our hook. So we just go to the next chain that has not been used, go through, and pull up a loop. And now we have seven. So we do our same old, same old, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and down to the end. Let's do that one more time. You do that until you have a nice little block of five. And now I go in to my chain so that I have seven loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two. And through the last two. And we'll do it again. There's all five of my vertical bars, but then I go to the next chain because I need seven loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two. And that's our sequence all the way down until we can go through and have one left on our hook. There's one, two, three, four. That's my fourth row high. Four rows high, I want it five. So we're going to do that one more time. There's all five of my vertical bars. And then I want to go to my next chain that has not been used. Pull through a loop. Seven loops on my hook. All right, so there's one, two, three, four, five sets of vertical, of the vertical bars but this one is not complete. You can see that it's very hollow. You can see through it much more than you can these. So what you need to do is on the very top row when, you have, when you're working with your fifth row, we'll go under the vertical bar and pull through a loop and slip stitch. And do this. I can't stress this enough. You want to be doing this very loosely because you have to work into these stitches again. So do your slip stitch under the vertical bar and slip stitch. Under the vertical bar and slip stitch. But don't do them tightly or you will struggle and be very sad. And there's my last vertical bar. But remember, there's always something else to do after the vertical bar. So we're going to use our next chain in line that hasn't been worked. And he goes through and gets a slip stitch too. And there's our first square. So we're going to continue and do the exact same thing again to make one more square and then I will show you the magic that is reversible. One, two, three, four, and five. Six loops on my hook. One more. There are seven loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two all the way across. Work under every vertical bar with another set of seven loops on our hook. There's all number four. Here's number five. I only have six loops, so we got to go to that next chain that has not been worked and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and then pull through the last two so you have one loop on your hook. And do that again. There's all five of my vertical bars, and then my next chain. So seven loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two. And 
and that's our third row high so we want to keep going we want to go again must go again so our squares stay even I really like this color too this is super fun this is going to be really pretty so there's my seven One, two, three, four. So we want one more row just like that. Work under every vertical bar. Plus a chain. And over both through two. One, two, three, four, five. Alright, so we did all five. One, two, three, four, five. But we have to finish this top one off because it is not a complete stitch yet. It's only half a stitch. So underneath the vertical bar, grab your yarn and pull through with a slip stitch. Again, loosely. Make sure you do it loosely. So you want to work into you'll be working into these in just a second. And if they're too tight, you'll be so sad. And there's my last vertical bar. Remember after that we have to do one more thing. So we're going to work into our last chain right there with the same slip stitch. The same idea of a slip stitch. So there's our two squares. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and five. There's row one, which is exactly the same as any other interlock. But now we are going to be sneaky and we are not going to finish off this color. We're going to turn our work and just slip stitch gently. You want to slip stitch gently. Back down. So you can start the next color. And there's my last slip stitch. See, I made that one a little bit too tight, so now I'm sad. So it was a harder, a little bit harder to get into. But there's my slip stitch. Now I'm ready to do my next row. It's a little slip stitch area there. So now we will be doing the exact same thing we did before. Go through the next loop, or the next stitch, pull up a loop till you have seven. See, if you make these too tight, you're going to be sad. I did not. Yay! So there's my seven loops. Turn over, pull through two. And do it again. Now we can work under our bars again. Our five vertical bars plus one in our next stitch. So we have seven loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through two again. And do that again. There's six on my hook, so I have to go over here to this next stitch that hasn't been used, pull up the seventh loop, yarn over, pull through two. And do that again under every vertical bar, pull up a loop, see there's my fifth bar but I only have six so we jump over to the next one that hasn't been used right there. And see I made those nice and loose, my slip stitches are nice and loose so that I can actually work into them which makes me very glad. One, two, three, four, so we need one more row under the vertical bars, all five of them. And 
and one more stitch on the previous square. Seven on my hook, yarn over, pull through two. All the way down till you have one loop left on your hook. And now remember, this is one, two, three, four, five. That was our fifth row. But we have to finish that row. So how we do that, under our bar, slip stitch loosely. Under the bar, grab your yarn, slip stitch loosely. There's our fifth vertical bar, but you always have to do one more thing. So we go to the next stitch that hasn't been used, and it gets a slip stitch also. These two here are now the wrong side, and this one is the right side. We flip it over, these two are the right side, and this one's the wrong side. So it is reversible, and it looks really, really pretty. And I think it looks really fun. You don't have to worry about always having the right side showing. If it tips, if it gets flipped over, it's not as pretty. Well, now it looks gorgeous all the time, which is so important. Why would you only want to look at one side? Both sides should be enjoyed. So now to start the next row, I'm going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just like any other time that we're working with an interlock to start the next one. But I'm going to turn my work and we're going to work in those chains again. Pull up a loop from every chain. So every chain, now I still have six on my hook. I need seven. So we're going to work into that same spot right into that stitch that I made too tight. Oh darn it, see? I do that I've made dozens of these and I still can make my slip stitches too tight. So just make just be conscious of those slip stitches. So there's my seven loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through, two, yarn over, pull through two. And do that again underneath each vertical bar. Give the six on our hook, but we need one more. So we're going to work right here in this little stitch and pull up a loop. Now I have seven loops on my hook. And do that again. And there's my fifth bar, but we always need one more. So go over to the next stitch that hasn't been used. Slip stitch like that. Pull up your seventh loop. Yarn over, pull through two. And again, because we need it to be five rows high, and we aren't quite there yet. So underneath all of our vertical bars, plus one. So there's seven loops on my hook. You see this is addictive and once you get uh, the hang of it and once you get on a roll, you will just fly through. Fly through making this. And there's a lot less we weaving in of ends because you don't have to change your color every single time. Every row to get a pattern that you like. And those are fifth row one, two, three, four, five. So we have to finish this one off with all of our very loose slip stitches. Loosely slip stitching because we want to work in those again for the next row. Always be thinking about that next row. And then over here to the next unworked stitch. Isn't that awesome? This is our first row and our second row and our third row. We need to make another square right here. This is going to end up looking like an X. So we want to go until we have seven loops on our hook. Three, 
there's six. And then I want to go into this little stitch and I did it. And I'll pull up my seventh loop and now we have to do an edge. We have to make our own edge because we don't have anything over here to grab a hold of like we did down here. There's nothing up here. So we have to make that edge. We have to make that make that stitch. So through this first our loop number seven, I'm going to yarn over and just pull through that loop only. And now we can do our pull through twos. And that's how you finish an edge on the long rows. We'll do this again. Underneath every vertical bar, underneath all five of our vertical bars, we will end up with six loops on our hook, but we want seven. So here's the sneaky part, the tricky part that you need to know. Turn our work a little bit and find that stitch that we just made right here and go under both, both bars of that new stitch that we just created. Pull up your loop. Now we have seven. And in that very first one, again, yarn over and pull through the very first loop only. Now we still have seven loops on our hook, so we can continue with our yarn over pull through two. And repeat. Go under all five vertical bars. But we need six loops on our hook, so we're going to turn our work a little bit, just a little bit right here, and go under both parts of that new stitch that we just made. Yarn over, pull up your seventh loop, and yarn over and pull through just number seven. And now we continue with our twos. Yarn over, pull through twos, all the way across. And it's one, two, three. We have to repeat. We're not to five rows high yet. Turn our work a little bit so you can find this, this stitch right here. And you go under both, both bars of that loop. Pull up your seventh loop. Yarn over, pull through just loop seven. And now you can do your yarn over, pull through twos all the way across again. And that was one, two, three, four. We have got one more to do so that our squares are even. So again, underneath all of the vertical bars. Plus you need something else because you always have to have seven. Just turn our work, find that new stitch that we just made. Pull up your seventh loop, yarn over, pull through the seventh loop only, yarn over, pull through twos all the way across. There you go, it's one, two, three, four, and five, but this one's not done yet. You see it looks hollow. We need to do our slip stitches. So under the vertical bar, yarn over and slip stitch loosely. And there's all of the verticals, but we need one more. So we're going to go over to that new stitch that we made and do the exact same thing underneath both pieces of that stitch, yarn over, and slip stitch. See now these are right side, right side, and this guy is wrong side. Flip it over, it's the exact opposite. Wrong, right, wrong. But it looks like it's supposed to be this way on purpose and you get this beautiful alternating pattern and I just love it. So again, all we do is turn our work slip stitch up the side of this square. We just slip stitch, did our slip stitches all the way up this side again. And now we continue. Pull up loops in all of these stitches 
until you have seven. It's only six on my hoop here. So I want to go into this little stitch right here and this one right here in this little corner gets tight just because it's been worked around it so much. But there's our seven. Yarn over, pull through two, through two, through two, through two, through two, through two. Through two. Let's continue that one more time. So you probably have the hang of it by now. It is really easy. If you've ever been afraid of interlock before, this is so simple. Don't be scared. There's our seven. And it goes so fast. And now I need seven loops on my hook, so I go to this next stitch that hasn't been worked. There's my seven. And again until we have five. Five rows high. One, two, three, four, five. But this one's not finished yet, so we have to do our loose slip stitches. Loosely, loosely. There's our last vertical bar, but we always have to do one more thing. So you go and find this next stitch that has not been worked, which is right here, and it gets a slip stitch too. And now you can see two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. So you just keep repeating over and over again until it's the length that you want it to be. You can finish this off at any point. And this beautiful baby blanket that I made is, I believe, I started with 12. Yes, I started with 12 across, so each, each square needs 11. So 11 times 12 plus 1, and I worked 16 rows high. So it's not quite a square, it's a little bit of a rectangle, and he's so cute. So adorable. And it's reversible. And I did not have to force my color rows. I could just keep right on going and going and there's no waste to your yarn. Isn't that awesome? It's so easy, guys. I promise. It's really, really simple. So thank you for stopping by. Thanks for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimblehooks. Share this with everybody because it's so gorgeous. And stop back soon because I've got so many fun things coming up. My calendar is full. Thanks. Bye.